Thank you for the handoff, Gail, and the kind words. And it's wonderful to see, like Gail was saying just a minute ago, and Tom was saying all of the, the various locations and roles that you all play in education. So I'm so glad to be here representing Ed Tech, Ed Tech Teacher and spearheading this year-long cohort, cohort course with you. Um, today's presentation is going to be just an overview, as Gail mentioned just a minute ago. It is absolutely impossible for me to cover in this session all of the materials and all of the topics that we're going to cover in the year-long course, but I want to try to focus on some of the key aspects of the course that I think would be, you know, interesting to you all and relevant to where you are in your journey right now. And as Gail was saying, there is a very nice descriptive outline on the EdTech Teacher um, website. However, I do want to say, because this is changing so quickly, I, you know, I'd like to take some liberties with the outline where appropriate and make sure that if there's something a little bit different that I want to add in or switch it up, that we might, you know, we'll do that if I'll do that if necessary. So, but for the most part, we will stick to that outline. And today, what I want to do is just give you a sense. Now, we've already done this part. Thank you, Gail, of <laughs> learning about each other in the chat. If you have not put a little information in yourself yet about the chat because you're just logging in, we would love to hear a little bit more about you, your role in education, maybe where you are from in the country. And while you are doing that, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background about me. So I am a teacher. I've been teaching middle school in a public school right outside of Boston, Massachusetts for about 13 years at one school, 17 years total. And I'm an ed tech coach in that school as well. And then I run professional development sessions in my district. I run professional development sessions for um, uh, local ed tech companies. And just recently, I have started running uh, AI professional development sessions for um, uh, different districts in Massachusetts and different states around the country. So AI has really become my passion since ChatGPT was released back in November of 2022, and I have been all in on AI. So this is really exciting for me. It's kind of reinvigorated my, um, you know, learning uh, new technology. And so I'm excited to share it with you all. I'm also a mom, a hiker, a runner, a reader. I had like a thousand pictures I put in there and I said, oh, I got to take those out. That's a little bit overkill. But when we get to know each other a little bit in the course, hopefully I'll get to know a little bit about your interests as well. So why this course? Well, simply because we know that AI is going to have implications for all industries, and we know it's going to have big implications in education. We know, do we know it's going to transform the educational landscape? I think at this point, that's what the discussions are all about. And that's really what I want to dig into in this course. And what the plan is, is to see what do we need to know in order to be prepared? What do we need to know as educators, teachers? What do our students need to know in order to be prepared? So I did want to put this one quote in here because I find it so interesting. Um, all of our tech giants in the United States and around the world have been weighing in on AI. And Bill Gates was, was, was the founder of Microsoft, and he was someone who went to OpenAI, which is the company that started ChatGPT. He went a couple of years ago to see a, a demonstration and to learn from the team what was happening with these large language models. And he said he was awestruck. And his quote was, this will change our world. And you can imagine it's hard to, you know, get that kind of reaction out of someone with this type of vision and experience. But I did grab this quote. He has his own website and he puts blog posts. And I just thought this quote was so interesting. He said, the development of AI is as fundamental as the creation of the microprocessor, the personal computer, the internet, and the mobile phone. It will change the way people work, learn, travel, get healthcare, and communicate with each other. Entire industries will reorient around it. So to say that we are in for a seismic shift, I think, is an understatement. So we know AI will have broad implications for all of those industries we just mentioned, those sectors we just mentioned. But the reason for this course is to dig deep into how this will impact education. So we're really going to look at the transformative potential of AI in education. One of the transformative potentials is, I'm just going to give this one example because there are, are lots, but 
One example that we already know is going to impact ed education is the time-saving potential that these AI, these generative AI tools have on teachers, so for teachers. So just a quick example, on the average, a teacher works about 50 hours per week. And when we look at how we break down those 50 hours, some teachers were surveyed for um, this article, I believe this was published in Ed Week, and they, this is how they broke down a typical week. So 10 and a half hours of prep. So that's things like lesson planning, activity planning, six and a half hours of evaluation and feedback, uh, three hours of professional development. So that would be things like um, in my district, we establish our, our goals for the year and then we collect data around those goals five hours of administrative tasks. So that's things like having team meetings, department meetings, maybe sending a communication home, a newsletter, an email to a parent. So all told that is 25 hours of our 50 hours a week that we are non-student facing. The good news and the exciting news is that all of those tasks that I just mentioned can now be assisted or automated with the help of AI. So think about in terms of teacher burnout and the amount of hours that we are spending and the amount of people who are leaving the profession because they just can't, simply just can't keep up. I'm really exciting about, excited about the time saving aspect of AI in education. So what exactly, what types of tasks can AI help us with as educators? As I mentioned, it can help with prep. So AI can do um, unit creation, lesson creation, content creation, evaluation and feedback. We have um, feedback AI tools now um, where you can get immediate feedback on a piece of writing, or um, you can get immediate feedback on something that you're trying to develop for your, for your um, curriculum. We have AI for writing, for organization. We have AI for administrative tasks. I mean, think about how long it takes you to do something like create a, a newsletter or a sub plan or you know, a report for um, your special education meeting. So there literally are tools to do all of these administrative tasks that we associate with our work. So just a quick overview to make sure that we understand exactly what we're talking about here in terms of AI and you know, why we're looking at AI in education. So artificial intelligence is not new. It, it, AI in general refers to systems that can do things that usually require human intelligence. So that's things like solving problems, recognizing faces, answering questions, et cetera. Now, we are all using AI already, and we have been for quite some time. It's in our daily life, it's virtual assistants, it's smartphones, it's social media, and it's really becoming more widespread every day. Some of the AI that you probably use this week, Siri, Alexa, Google Maps, Google Translate, Grammarly, Duolingo, et cetera. So when you're on your phone and you start to type a message to you know, your friend and it fills in the words, that's an example of AI that we're already using. This new type of AI that we're talking about is generative AI, and this type of AI can create new content. So it learns from a large amount of existing data that's been on the web since September 2021 and prior to September 2021. It can generate outputs from the data, and then it can learn from this new data it's created. That's things like ChatGPT, CuriePod, Pictory, and there are literally hundreds more tools, AI generative tools. So this is a little uh, slide that I put together for my own. I had it on a sticky note in my office and just to keep my, my own thoughts straight. So in the most simple terms, AI can do things that usually require human intelligence. Generative AI can create things that usually require human intelligence. So a little bit of a distinction there. So the way that the course will be organized is we will have a 90 minute session, a live session every month. It'll be on a Monday. Usually it's a second or third Monday and we have that um, on the website. I can share that at the end as well. The session will be focused on an aspect of AI related to education and the materials will all be organized in Google Classroom. 
The other thing I decided to do for the course is to have a featured guest or a speaker or a developer or an educator or someone on the forefront of AI and education to come and share their experience. So that'll be like the last, you know, 20 minutes or so of each session. And I already have a bunch of really interesting people lined up for the first four sessions. So I'm excited for that part. So each month we will plan to see, this is just a little um, snapshot of how I uh, organize the Google Classroom, um, the materials. So we'll start with a question. We'll start with an introduction on a topic. We will explore. So I use the SEED acronym, by the way. That's why it says we will plant a SEED. Um, we'll explore some ideas around that topic, some research, some understanding. I'll share um, some readings and um, you can have a look at those prior to the session. We'll engage with that um, particular either AI tool or we'll you know, start to create things on our own, depending on what it is that we're looking at. And then we're going to have a little bit of reflection. And that's when we're going to segue into our guest speaker and see, um, you know, learn a little bit more from their experience in the field. So the amount of topics that we have is just, you know, it's an endless list, but a couple of the ones that I wanted to mention for sure. Um, we're going to talk a lot about personalized learning and AI. And as I said, because it's moving at the speed of light, some of these will change. But, you know, personalized learning, we're, we're really going to look at strategies and tools for, for implementing this personalized learning and also um, include some adaptive learning systems using AI. AI literacy, we know this is a huge topic and we were just touching on it just a minute ago before we got started. So approaches to teaching AI principles, data literacy, responsible use, ethics, et cetera, that's gonna be a big topic. And I did put ethics considerations as a separate topic because I think this is very, um, I think there's a lot there to cover. So when I say ethical considerations, that's things like, um, fair use, privacy, um, you know, um, bias, we're going to look at um, AI, they don't call it plagiarism, they call it generative AI plagiarism, because obviously plagiarism is taking somebody else's work and passing it off as your own. But with AI and with generative AI specifically, it is new material, it's new content, it's new learning, so it's not plagiarizing necessarily. Um, but they call it generative AI plagiarism. So, um, and then AI and inclusion or AI and inclusive education. So really important to discuss topics on how we can use AI to support the, you know, diverse learning needs, promote equity, and um, make sure we're reaching all of our students in a fair and equitable way. A couple more topics that I did want to mention that we will cover um, just briefly, AI for for professional development. So how can we use AI and how can we help the people in our school? How can we um, either train fellow educators or our staff, or if you're a coach, you know, how can we use AI tools and, and um, create resources for people that save us time? As an ed tech coach in my district, I spend an awful lot of time creating resources for my, my staff to try to help them with various tools. And I can just see already the incredible assistance that these AI generative tools are gonna be for that part of my role. Um, so I mentioned suggested student and school district guidelines. We were talking about that at the beginning of the session as well. So stool, schools are grappling with this. Some districts haven't touched it at all yet because it's such a big, issue and really everybody's in the same boat. We're all getting started. So we're going to talk about that and hopefully what we can come away with is some guidelines, if not for your school or your district, certainly for your team, the, the group of people that you are with um, on a daily basis so that you can have some common language and understanding around using AI yourself, using AI with students and um, the expectation for student use. We're going to talk about large language models. So that's things like ChatGPT. That's um, Microsoft has one called Bar. No, is he, are they Bing? Or Bing or Bard? One of them has Bing. Microsoft, I think, is Bing. Google is Bard. There's Llama. There's Claude. Claude too. So large language models are, you know, they're incredibly powerful, and they're, you know, all of our generative AI tools are sort of the, um, are built on top of these foundational large language models. So I wanna look at those because I think it's important to really understand those. It's not gonna be a technical you know, session by any means, but just so we can understand exactly what's happening you know, when you pull back the curtain. And then finally, the generative AI tools for educators. So 
in one of my training sessions, I told teachers, you know, it, there were 73 AI tools when I started looking back in March, you know, I had played with ChatGPT for a couple of months and thought, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And it was really like mind blowing what it could do. And then I started to find these tools that were built on top of the large language model that were creating resources instantly. And I found about 75 and I made a spreadsheet and I had the tool and I had what it did and I had how much it costs and who it would benefit. And then two days later, it was 83 tools. And then two days later, it was 126 tools. So the last time I looked, and it's a database that, um, um, like a collection of, uh, it's a huge AI database for all different areas, um, all different sectors. There were 500 AI tools, generative AI tools for teachers. So we are definitely gonna spend some time looking at the ones that are the most beneficial, I like to look at ones that are sort of the most bang for your buck, understand what their business model is in terms of, you know, are they free? How long if they are free? Because a lot of them will be free initially just to see if you like them and then they will charge. So we're going to look at some of the, the ways that these um, tools are set up, what they can do. And I'm hopefully going to be able to cut down on hours and hours worth of work that you would spend otherwise going through all these tools because there's a whole lot to choose from. Okay, so um, the live sessions, I'll just mention, they will be Mondays from 7 to 8.30. These are the different dates. This is all on the website, so you can um, go in and jot these down. We are going to record every session, and every session will be posted on the Google Classroom following the session. Sometimes it takes a little bit to edit the session, you know, depending on what was in there. So within like a day or so, we'll put it up on the on the um, Google Classroom so that if you miss a session or if something comes up and you can't make it, you can absolutely catch up and you won't have, you know, missed the whole, all of the content for those 90 minutes. And then the resources that we are offering is uh, are a graduate credit from Worcester State. That's an option. We are offering 24, 24 professional development hours and then all of the materials that I share. So it's presentations like this one, um, you know, all of the databases I've, uh, I've created and collected over the past 12 months. I'll be sharing all of these with you throughout the course. And all of these will be materials that you'll have access to. You know, I can give you the editable templates if you wanted to use them to train your own staff or to train the you know, share that with um, teachers on your team or in your school, you can certainly, you're welcome to do that. So I did want to end with this one final thought. And I, this is another, I, you know, I, I pull things out of magazines and off websites when I see things that really stop me in my tracks. And this is a, um, this was in this latest issue of The Week magazine. And I really, it really did stop me. And it the it was the opening um, sentence of an article about AI and schooling and how it was changing schooling. And it said, AI is raising questions about whether the age old method of educating students can or should survive in a world where sophisticated answers to virtually any question are just a few keystrokes away. And I just, you know, it just stopped me. It just stopped me. So that's the type of spark that we're going to use when we start talking about these tools. You know, can we use them? Yes. Should we use them? You know, what are the implications for the broader horizon of education? And, the, and how does it, you know, relate to the history of how we've educated students in, in this country for the past hundred years? So that is a quick summary overview of our course. All right, Tom and Gail, do you have anything else you want to add before we sign off? Not really. I, one person, I don't know if she's still on. If you're not taking it for graduate credit, you don't have to do any of the assignments. I think some of the assignments are really valuable. They're all going to be focused on what you're going to be learning in your classroom. So you might want to take the assignment and do it, but there's no obligation if you're not taking it for graduate credit. We'll still give you a certificate but it's for the college credit. That's when you have to do an assignment. So just wanted to be clear about that. Thank you. Thank you for, for mentioning that. Yeah, that's clarifies it for me too. So thanks, Gail. All right. Well, hopefully we'll see you all. If not, good luck on your AI journey. It's going to be a fun, a fun ride. So have a wonderful last few days of summer if you're still enjoying some summer and um, we will see you all soon. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming in.